Rey Mysterio, the new United States champion. Happy Boyaka noises. <laughs> She'll take me anywhere, she'll take me anywhere, as long as she's scared of me. She said, she'll take me anywhere, she'll take me anywhere, as long as I stay queen. Yes, yes, mommy's lips. Yes, yes, mommy's lips. Yes, yes, mommy's lips. Yes, yes, mommy's lips. Hey, me, Matt here. This is a SmackDown review. I know I didn't do Raw. Raw wasn't bad. But I think this episode of SmackDown was much better in my opinion. It was one of those things where... It's okay to have somebody that is past their prime have at least a mid-card title. I think that's okay. I think that's one of those things where... It makes me happy because here it's, well, I'll get to it when I get to it. So you have Charlotte Flair taking on Oscar, and honestly, can we end this already? Like seriously, like that, it just, and I, I don't know, I can't remember what it was. But they said, oh, this is the women's division feud of the decade. And I think this feud was the shits. I don't know. I, I just think that this match was dumb. You have damage control coming out. Yes, EO I thought was a baby face, but apparently not. Damage control coming out and causing you no know, contest, so... Just end it. End it right now. I mean, it sucked in 2018. It sucks now. Speaking of feuds that I need to end, we have this match. AJ Styles versus Karrion Cross. Of course, you have Scarlett in Karrion's corner and Mia Yim in AJ's corner. And I kind of thought to myself watching this match, would have been fucking cool if you had this in TNA or Impact rather because I know that AJ was in New Japan and Karrion had been in Impact Wrestling but this was a good match. I once again think that they need to have another stipulation match possibly payback because this was just dumb. It was yeah, because I mean it was the same old, same old. Except actually AJ went over and you did think that Karrion was gonna win. I mean they have outside interference with Scarlet, which was brought back down by Mia Yim. And so yeah. AJ was able to hit the Styles Clash, getting the win. So I'm not sure where to go from here. But if anything, let's have a match of payback. I want to move on. Like, this is kind of like, I don't like this. I don't like it when feuds linger on and on. Like, I get it. We're going to keep doing this. But let's have a different outcome. Let's have a different match stipulation or something. Instead of just having the same old wrestling match. It makes sense, in my opinion. This was pretty cool because we were in Calgary, Alberta, but that doesn't matter because we got a surprise and ring interview with the Rated R so Postar. Edge. And then, of course, there's a break. I mean, whatever. 
it was a pretty good, feel good, I should say, interview because he talked about lesson that you know SmackDown is gonna be in Toronto next week. It's gonna be the anniversary of Edge being in WWE, and so. He wants to face somebody that he hasn't faced before. And he says he wanted to have a match with Sheamus because Sheamus was the one that initially brought him back to WWE. And we all know the story of the Celtic Warrior workout. We all know that Edge after he had it tumble down his hell during that video he thought to himself if I could do that then I can get back in the ring again and so you know Seamus comes out with the brawling boots and then he tells a story which I've never heard before up until this point where Seamus was an independent wrestler in Ireland and he said that he thought about quitting and then the one person who talked him into staying in the business was none other than Adam Copeland, Edge. So he did buy Seamus a pint and you know they were friends ever since and I thought that was really cool. So yeah, next week they're gonna have a patch, but at the end, you know, of their promo, they shake. Seamus pulls Edge close, saying, be careful what you wish for. Something along those lines. And yeah, so I don't know what that means. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I hope that Edge doesn't get screwed. I know that Edge Adam Copeland wanted to have his last match in Toronto. I also thought he wanted to be a champion again, but I'm not quite sure when or if that's going to happen. I just don't know. I think that did plans change? I, I mean, we'll see what happens. And I think next week, for the first time ever, this is going to be a good match to see Sheamus and Edge. We then had a match with L.A. Knight and Top Dollar, and this was a pretty good match too. You had Hit Row on the outside, I think Ashante looked like he just came back from college, and it was a good match. b Fab tried to get involved in it, but it didn't work. L.A. Knight hit the elbow, and then yeah. Long Force Drama. One thing I've noticed is that people said that it was like a version of People's Elbow and Stone Cold Stunner. A People's Elbow, I understand. It does not look like the Stone Cold Stunner. It looks more like the first pedigree that Triple H ever had before turning it into the actual pedigree that it would become. But, anyways, yeah, now they didn't win the match, and, you know, I'm glad he's getting a push. I don't, I'm not sure where it's going to go, honestly, because he's just arrived in the company, so it'll be interesting to see where this goes. I think he'll be a champion by the end of the year, but it's, I don't know if it's going to be the U.S. Championship, or... I don't know. But I don't see it be the WWE title. Not yet. So, Santos Escobar was doing a backstage interview with Caleb Braxton. He got taken out by Austin Theory. They were supposed to have a match. And then, of course, they were going to have the match. And then, when Santos came out, Austin Theory attacks him from behind. Thus, you know, the rest of the LWO come out 
and then Adam Pierce comes out and says, this isn't happening. We are going to have a match. It's going to be you versus Rey Mysterio, which I guess that angle last week was for nothing. If he was legit hurt, which I believe he was, then it's interesting to see him actually have a wrestling match now. I guess he is okay. So, but this was cool. I mean, Ray started right away before the bell, then cutting to commercial. You know, this was cool. A bunch of different variations of the 619, including one to the spine, the first one. Then an, and then another one. And then a final one to win the match. And Rey Mysterio has become the United States Champion for the second time. And I asked this to Kyle because for some reason I forgot that he was United States Champion before in WWE because he is a Grand Slam Champion. But I think he was also that in WCW as well. So very cool to see that. Then we have the last confrontation. We have the bloodline with, of course, Roman and Solo Sokoa, and then Paul Heyman come out. And then Jim comes out and basically says he didn't do it for Roman. He did it for The Rock. Actually, no, he didn't do that either. He did it for himself, and then Jay comes out, basically super kicks Bowman, and then him and Jimmy are talking, super kicks Jimmy, and then I missed the whole thing, unfortunately. I guess he quit WWE or something. I don't know. So this whole thing is kind of fucked up. In my opinion, I don't know what's going on. But we'll see what happens next week. SmackDown was a really good show. I believe it was. And then next week we'll be in Toronto. We'll see Edge and Sheamus. And honestly, I smell a heel turn for Santos Escobar. I mean, he came out with the LWO and congratulated Ray. He has tears in his eyes and on crutches, but for some reason, I smell a heel turn. I could be wrong. I really could. I hope I am. But anyways, talk to you later. Bye. So you know that them cutting WCW was a long time coming. <laughs> 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 I don't think that's the case at all. You look at some of his earlier interviews that you...